question, but let's go. Merry Christmas Eve, E. A few weeks ago, I got on the call and discussed how I've been dating this girl for five months and she broke up with me because of my lack of showing her love and direction in the relationship. Since then, I've been hankering over her and emotions have been overwhelming to the point where all I can think about is her and entertain what ifs. I know that I was expecting this breakup and, and objectively, I have been okay with it because being a relationship didn't line up with my plans I have for my life in the next couple of years. My problem is now this emotion of neediness and overpowering me to the point of running back to her and ask to get her back and work things out. I've attempted two 72 hour fasts. The first time I broke down at 41 hours, immediately started crying my heart out of sadness and loneliness. Amazing how fasting is medicine for the soul, right? Uh, yesterday, I achieved 72 hours and planned on writing my soul goals, but I again became overwhelmed with sadness and loneliness. How can I stay objective during these times and not let my emotions drive my actions? I've been having trouble sleeping more than six hours as well since because I started overthinking things and waking up at night anxious. Listen, fellas, this is why it sounds crazy when I say this. And if somebody would have told me this when I was in my 20s, I wouldn't have listened to them. But I gotta, I have to spit it because I see it. Having sex with these women is no better than getting hooked on heroin. You're a crack addict for sex. Crack, it's right? Think about that. A joke is a crack, her crack. You're a addict for her crack. And she's the dealer and you wanna go running back to her. If you could, if you could accept that, paradigm that perspective you see yourself as you really are which is a person that's addicted to a drug you don't love her you love the way she makes you feel people that love drugs don't love the drug they love the way it makes them feel and you're addicted to the way she's making you feel and i just want you to be aware of that because you got yourself in it in, like, if you're a heroin addict, you're putting the needle in you. The difference is you're a sex addict, you're putting the needle in her. You, whenever you put yourself into a woman, you're at the, you become, you put yourself at risk of becoming addicted to her. It sounds crazy, but the, a flood of emotions and chemicals in your brain and your body are the same as someone who's on heroin. You get that same flood and then you get this attachment. And a lot of that attachment stuff is mommy issues. I'm not, I don't want to get into the psychology of it, but the whole bottom line is if you stop having sex with these women, they will stop having this control over you. They will stop having this chemical control over you, just like when you're addicted to a substance. And so I know that doesn't help you help answer your question, but I just want to put the, I want, have to put this out there for you guys and for all of you so that you understand why I say stop having sex with women. Fornicating, that's what it's called, fornication. Stop fornicating because it's fucking up your brains. Isn't, and, and you guys do a lot of research on fapping. I know you do, you know, you show me all the research, tell me all the things. You gotta understand something that promiscuity, fornicating is no better than fapping. It may make your ego feel better because it's a real flesh and bone, bone woman, but it's no better. You're really just masturbating with somebody's body. The only difference is now, instead of it just being your hand in a screen, it's another person that will yield, wield that power over you. This is the part of the reason why men have, have, have succumbed and have been subverted by women's power in this degenerate feminist age. Because the degeneracy began during the sexual revolution. You gotta read this book by E. Michael Jones, Libido Dominandi, or at least go on YouTube and watch some of his videos on the Libido Dominandi, which is sex domination. The, the, the culture that wants to see you destroyed, the demons that run this world, liberated you with porn and with teaching women how to be sluts. Prior to the 1950s, it was like, it was taboo to be having sex out of wedlock because they didn't have birth control pills. Think about this also, bro. If, you, if you're, you know, you're having sex with her and, and 
she's probably on all kinds of chemicals too. She's on birth control pills. I bet you she's on birth control pills. It's unnatural and it's damaging to your brain, to your physiology and to your soul. Stop having sex with women. Easier said than done, right? But that's why God created marriage. I understand that marriage is a, is a, is a raw deal today. I will not deny that. But we can't skirt around the issue and then get ourselves caught up and fornicating and put ourselves under the oppression of these demonic women. They don't even know they're doing it. And I, you know, I'm not trying to blame women or blame this girl. She doesn't even know that she's doing it. It's, un it's completely unconscious. That's why there were boundaries around sex. Now, You, you, you literally do sound like a crack addict when you say, you know, like uh, the emotions are overwhelming me and I have to, and I want to go, I want to go, I got to go, I got to run. A number of things. The withdrawal symptoms are going to pass. Withdrawal symptoms pass. The, and here's another thing. The battlefield for your soul is in your mind. And what do I mean by that? These withdrawal symptoms will only be prolonged as long as you allow your mind to be usurped. <laughs> I'm saying the word right now. People correcting me. Usurped by the thoughts of this woman. When you're thinking about her, you're, 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 you're further building the stronghold. You're building up the stronghold. You're fortifying the stronghold in your mind. You got to get her out of your mind. And I'm happy that you're fasting because fasting helps you build self-control. And I'm happy that you broke down at 41 hours and started crying so that you could have that release. And that's probably, it's probably decades worth of pain, right? Because the part of the reason why we become addicted to women this way is because we, like I said, we have mama issues because our mothers grew up in a feminist world and they don't give their children what they really need. Your mom probably had a job, maybe she was divorced um, and she probably didn't nurse you like we are talking about before. We don't get what we needed from our mothers. And as soon as our dicks start getting hard, we start looking for to replace that with, uh, with, a, with some girl, right? So that is called love object relation loss. So all that in psychology, so all that, pain from the love object relation lost with your mother uh it's good you're in your 20s now let it all out let let yourself break down and cry and let it all go let all that sadness and loneliness go the girl is just a icon she's she is just a representative of the pathology right it's not even her you've made her a false god and this is what men do this is what we do Guys, we got to recognize too, we make women into false gods. And so this will lead me to my final point. I was listening to Scott Hahn, Dr. Scott Hahn on YouTube the other day, yesterday, and he was talking about religion and how like the only way that we're going to come back from this, you know, degenerate world that we're living in is when religion makes a comeback. And what he, his point was, one of his points was everybody's worshiping something. Don't think that you don't have religion. You have religion. You're worshiping something, You're either worshiping the screens that we're addicted to every day, bowing down and praying to the screen. Think about it. Like if you don't think you worship this thing, ask yourself, what do you, what's the first thing you do in the morning? And it's the first thing you do before you go to bed at night. You bow to the altar of the screen, right? We worship money. We worship food. That's why fasting is so good. Some people, most people worship food and they don't know it because tell them they can't eat one day. One day, just don't eat. <gasps> They'll freak out because you're taking their God away. The God is the thing that they, that they think that they need for, for sustenance. When you, you know you, something has become a God in your life, when you think you need it to survive. Now you see it. When you start having sex with this woman, she's become your God. The only thing that could satisfy the creation which we are a creation and there's only one thing that could satisfy us and that is the creator 
You got to fill that hole. A lot of times people like denigrate religion and they say it's for weak people because they'll say, oh, you just need because uh, you need something to to lean on. You need something to rest on. Uh, yeah, you do. You need to fill that hole because if you don't, it will be filled by something diabolical like women or porn or food or screens or money or depression or anxiety. All these problems are because you're trying to fill the hole that can only be fulfilled by the creator. So awareness is transformative in and of itself. Be aware that you're addicted and you're worshiping. And the best thing, even in like the 12 step programs for someone who's addicted and is worshiping a false God is to acknowledge a higher power. Acknowledge the creator. This is why I like the Catholic church so much because you can go every day. Me, I got an addictive personality. I got addicted to one girl 30, 30 years ago, <laughs> 29 years ago, right? I got addicted to her and she's still here. I get addicted to all kinds of things. And the worst I found myself in was being addicted to weed five years ago. The only way I was going to get rid of it was going to be able to amend my life to get rid of that, that, that final addiction was to fill that hole with daily communion with God, the father, my creator. Right? So you're going to, there's going to be a hole. You're going to get rid of this woman and there's going to be a hole there. It's going to be filled by something. It's going to be filled by something. This will be a good time to repent, turn around, confess your sins, ask the Lord to heal you from your fornicating spirit and be a man, right? Like if somebody is addicted, like, you know, I use this example all the time. I'm a trainer and I have a client who's obese. He's addicted to food. And he comes to the gym after I gave him a meal plan. And one day he comes to the gym. He's like, Elliot, every time I drive by the Krispy Kreme donut store, I can't help myself. I got to turn into the parking lot and eat a dozen donuts. Krispy Kreme, my man. How do you think I'm going to behave towards him? I got to shout at him. I'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? What kind of weak man are you? Snap out of it. It's just donuts. Sex is just donuts. You don't need sex. You don't need it. It's just feeling. It just, it tastes good like donuts. How weak are you that you, and I'm not, I am kind of yelling at you, bro. I am yelling at you. How weak are you that you can't spit that sweet taste out your mouth? You got to keep running back to that drug dealer. Drug dealer. She's a dealer. Not even like Krispy Kreme donut where some teenage kid who's just taking your cash and giving you a bunch of fried dough. It's a, she's got you hooked by your heart, by your head, and by your balls. So let yourself cry. Let it pass. Keep fasting. That's great because I just read, you guys know how much I love St. Ignatius, Brianna Bri Bri Shav. I was just reading this to my King Transformation students, uh, not my King uh, Leadership students today, um, about the, vir the, the virtues that act against sinful passions. And he was talking about fasting here. Uh, trying to find it. Oh, regaining flesh, temperance, and varying foods. Yeah. He says, through fasting, you reign in the flesh. You reign in the flesh through fasting and through temperate and unvarying foods. 
from which all passions in general begin to weaken, especially self-love, which consists of excessive love of the flesh, the stomach, and its pleasures. He says, accurately keeping the fast established by the church. You know, he's orthodox. Abstinence is the virtue. You can even look at it right here. The virtue is the first virtue that acts against the, the passions. Abstinence. Abstinence from excessive consumption of food and drink, especially wine. Accurate keeping of the fast established by the church. Reigning in the flesh through temperate and unvarying foods from which all passions in general begin to weaken. That's the important part. From which all passions in general begin to weaken by fasting, especially self-love, right? And which consists of excessive love of the flesh, right? What are you thinking about, right? It's all flesh issues we're dealing with, right? It's the fallen fleshy nature, the stomach and pleasures, and it's pleasure. So there you go. I think you can do it. I think you can do it. I think you could be strong. And I think you can make it happen, dude. I'm proud of you. Proud of you for sticking it through. Delete her. Just like I would tell my fat client, I would say, drive a different way. Don't pass by the Krispy Kreme donut store. Just don't see it. That way you don't smell it. You don't see it. You're not tempted. Delete her from your phone. Delete her from your social media. Delete her from your uh, text message. Wipe your life clean and you'll be good. Imagine like you trying to quit drugs, right? Like I told you five years ago when I was addicted to weed. Imagine in my attempts to try to quit smoking, if I just like, I kept it in my jaw. Like I'm just not going to smoke it anymore. I'm going to put it in a jaw. <laughs> That's just going to be calling me all day long. You try to quit something and you have it in your house. When I'm talking to clients and they want to lose weight, and I, one of the first things I say is, you got to get all that shit out of your house. But my wife buys cookies. Well, tell us, stop. If she wants to buy cookies, leave it in the car. Don't bring it past this threshold. Don't bring it in the house. Don't bring it in the house. Don't have her in your phone. Wash her out of your life. Time heals, bro. Done. Yo, it's your bro Elliot Hulse here and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation coaching students where among many things, we get together about four or five hours a week where we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. And if you wanna join a like-minded group of men that get together every day, to grow stronger in every way during this degenerate age is real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me or one of my teammates will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I really hope to see you perhaps at our next live call. Done.